The first one on the list is the Spook of History. So right now, I would like to um, ask Mr. Dave Mohan to please come to the stage. He's going to be doing a presentation on the Spook God History. So my name is Dave Moore, and I'm from Alderville First Nation, actually. And uh, I've been uh, employed with Skugog Island First Nation for the last six years as their uh, cons consultation specialist, they called me, in the beginning. Uh, now I'm um, the uh, supervisor of consultation management membership. And uh, former bad counselor at Alderville First Nation and long time staff member at Alderville First Nation. I built my house in Alderville in 1995. Uh, in the back, uh, in the back of the beautiful, our beautiful Black Oak Savannah. So uh, when I when I do the Alderville presentation, I'll delve into that uh, somewhat more. Um, as it turns out, because I'm a, a hysterian, I um, often get uh, asked to present on behalf of Skugog Island First Nation. Skugog Island First Nation is a small community. Um, about approximately 238 band members presently. I believe it's the smallest First Nation in Ontario. It might be the second smallest in Canada. Um, but a mighty community, economic development wise, quite mighty. Um, and because of its small size and, and in land base and in numbers, um, I believe that at one time it was uh, out of sight, out of mind. Um, so I want to take you through a few slides here. I, uh, I don't know if I'll make it to uh, one hour and 15 minutes through this presentation. Um, I probably will make it through one hour and 15 minutes through the Alderville presentation, but I'll try my best with this presentation. Um, the, first, uh, the first slide uh, is a poor copy of the, uh, the totem of Jacob Crane. He uh, was in 1850. He was the chief in 1856. He was the chief in 1843 when the First Nation um, uh, was at Balsam Lake, and he was uh, instrumental in um, negotiating for the land base that became the reserve of Skugagami. Jacob Crane. This is uh, actually the totem taken from the 1856 treaty for the islands in the Trent and. Uh, I work alongside Claire Salt for new credit. To Claire um, works for our corporation at Scoobock Out, and I believe Claire just walked out, but uh, I want to remind Claire, and I do remind her when I try to see her that we should be using this. I like to see this employed and, uh, as a, sort of a, an honor to uh, Jacob Crane um, for what he did in the securing the land base on Scoobock Out. Uh, this next picture is a picture that I uh, that I use in all my presentations. And Tom Cowie, Tom, uh, he knows this picture very well. This is a beautiful photograph taken in 1907 by the Roy Studio out of Peterborough, and it's just reflective of the way our people utilize the land all through the Corthus, all through our our ter ter territory uh, in this in this region. Um, um, it's taken on Rice Lake, and when I present at schools or to certain agencies, I always ask, what do you notice about this? If you've been to Rice Lake, what do you notice about this photograph? Mm -hmm. And the first thought should be all over the wild rice. That is no longer there like it was. We won't say much more than that when we talk. Uh, but this is a beautiful photograph. These fellows here are uh, from Hiawatha. And uh, I believe if I have it right here, Bill Musgrave, Bill Muskrat, George Potash, Tom, Alfred, Alfred Crow, and Pooh Anderson. And you'll notice the beautiful canoe canoes that they're, they're using, probably Rice Lake canoes, Rice Lake or Peterborough canoes. Um, so again, it's just, I have this photograph, actually, I have this, uh, this framed in my home, in, uh, when the Roy Studio um, was looking to dump its 300,000 negatives, historical negatives, um, 
It fell into the hands of a, a man called John Wine, briefly. And John Wine came upon this photograph, and he was intrigued by, by the photograph. And he wondered at that time, we're talking about 15 years ago, we're all to the Wild Rice go. And uh, he came to Alderville, and we met briefly, and then he came back again with this photograph framed in a beautiful frame. So it's, uh, it's special to me, and because uh, I remember some of the old people that would have harvested this way on Rice Lake, <clears throat> I'd like to always show off this photograph. So, oh, next, uh, sorry. Uh, so, Skilgog Island, um, after the treaty, number 20, 1818 treaty, uh, Skilgog Island uh, and the, the Mississaugas that uh, were residing uh, along that western corridor of treaty number 20, um, they were the first group to actually secure reserve land um, after treaty number 20. And they went to uh, they went to Balsam Lake. They went to Balsam Lake. If you could just uh, go to the next slide, please. Balsam Lake. So this is Balsam Lake, and Balsam Lake is uh, up near um, up towards Kirkfield. It's sort of on the upper reaches of Treaty Number Twenty, and it's actually above Scugog Island or Scugog Lake, Lake Scugog, and. and and Balsam Lake are above each other. Balsam Lake is above Skugog. And uh, so the reserve that uh, the, the Mississaugas, that eventually came to Skugog, the first reserve was at Balsam Lake on Indian Point. And, um, and they were there after 1818. Um, just back to that other slide, please, the one above. Um, but here's an, here's an interesting, uh, little snippet of, uh, of how and why the Balsam Lake Indians, as they were called, the Mississaugas at Balsam Lake, wanted to come to Scugog. There was obviously a relationship between Scugog and Balsam Lake and, and up that corridor. I'm a real map person, and I'm also, uh, I, I, uh, I know the, the lakes and the land quite well, I believe, and if one uh, follows uh, Scugog Lake out of the lake, up the Scugog River to Lindsay, past Lindsay, to Sturgeon Lake, and then Sturgeon Lake into Cameron Lake, and Cameron Lake into Balsam Lake. And above Balsam Lake, you'll hit the Gull River, and the Gull River will take you north into Alberta and the Minden area. So that was the highway that goes was Nishnaw back at, um, at the Scugog and Balsam Lake site. That was their highway, was Scugog to Sturgeon, to Cameron, to Balsam, to Gull, and up north into the Minden and Halliburton area. So there was, uh, in 1843, when this was written, um, there were approximately 90 in number, presently settled within the township of Bexley, on a point of land jutting out into Lake Balsam, which is Indian Point, known as Indian Point which is the most northerly of the chain of lakes running northwest across the back townships of the district of Newcastle. Within the present year, 1843, these, these, these Indians, and I use that word uh, historically, I have a problem with that, having become dissatisfied with the climate and the quality of the land at the Balsam Lake, have purchased 600 acres on the banks of Lake Scugog to be paid out of their share of their annuity and are making preparations for removing from their former settlement. Their improvements will be sold for their benefit. Their reason for removing evinces their desire to advance in the pursuit of agriculture, not necessarily. Next slide in the slide after the map, please. Okay. So 1844 is the year of the formal purchase of lands on Scuba Island for the benefit of the Mississauga Formally on Balsam Lake. The reason for the intended move back south was to be closer to the merchants and their goods, because as Jacob Crane said at Balsam, it was too far out of the way. 
So it was not necessarily to delve into agriculture. It was to be closer to the, to the white people, to the white merchants, and to be able to barter and trade for better goods. Hey, Don, how you doing? Uh, being a small group at Balsam, a portion of having already moved some two years prior to Lake Simcoe and Mud Lake, circa 1841, they were informed that in order to make the land deal work, they must forego two years of annuity monies to secure the reserve lands. Now that would have hurt that first, that would have hurt the people, that would have hurt the people. Two years they were asked to forego, two years of their annuity. And they would have had a small, a smaller portion of the annuity that went to the, uh, the groups that signed Treaty Number 20, the Scugog side of the annuity would have been quite small to begin with. And uh, they were asked to forego two years of that in order to make the land deal work, in order to secure the, uh, the reserve base of 800 acres. Um, Jacob Crane said in 1855, he described uh, and he was a little perturbed. He was he described the uh, the way in which the group met in council to discuss to, to discuss leaving Balsam Lake. And there were the group that uh, that left in 1841. He was quite perturbed that they left, um, and they and they went to Mud Lake and Lake Simcoe. Um, he said some things that I wouldn't want to repeat uh, in my presentation. Um, but he was uh, quite uh, perturbed at certain individuals that up and left Balsam Lake and went to, uh, to Mud Lake and or Lake Simcoe. Next slide, please. 1844, this is, uh, just describes the surrender uh, by James Henderson to Her Majesty Queen Victoria, 800 acres of land being composed of lots 6 and 7 in the 11th concession and lot 7 and 8 in the 12th concession of the township of Cart Cartwright in the county of Durham. Upon trust, nevertheless, for the tribe of Mississauga Indians settled at Boston Lake in the New Newcastle District and their posterity forever. If you could just go to the next, uh, to, yeah, the next one. Yeah, so here's an old, here's a NASA I picked off some maps uh, off Google. Here's a great map, Nassau map, probably from 700 miles up or 700 kilometers. Um, here's Boston Lake. There's Cuba. So, as I mentioned, you would leave the Cuba River up to Lynn. This is Lindsay. This is Goose Bay. This is Virgin Lake. Over here to Blue Rose in the Cavern Lake. Over here to Balsam Lake. And here's Indian Point and the Gulf River that takes you north into Halliburton and Minden. So, uh, and here, Rice Lake this is for contacts. Rice Lake, Fishing Lake, uh, Shamong Lake. <coughs> What? No, because you're streaming everything through here. It's all going through there, so you can't get. You can't get it. No. <laughs> uh, Scuba Island. Back to that next slide. Uh, back up. There we go. Here's a map of Scuba Island. Um, it's actually seven miles long. Seven mile. Seven mile island. <laughs> It uh, was flooded out in um, the early 1830s. And um, let's just move down the map. Let's just move down, please. Move down, okay. Um, down, please. Down. Down to the next. Next. Sorry, I'm going to have you all over the map. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> So, the Mississaugas of Scugong Island First Nation have been formally residing on the reserve First Nation land since 1844, as I mentioned. However, the people have been on the island since much earlier. In January 1889, in a paper entitled The Archaeology of Scugong Island, 
based on author A.F. Chamberlain's visit to the island during August of 1888. He wrote that the Mississaugas and Ojibwe's had been, had, quote, been acquainted with Scugog Island for over a century and a half. Chamberlain, he was educated at the University of Toronto when acquiring his PhD from Clark University in Massachusetts, was an early student of anthropology and an important early recorder of Mississauga legends and of the Mississauga dialect of Scuba Island. Next, please. So while the reserve lands were not secured until 1844, the written and oral record indicates that the people were familiar with the benefits of the island for many generations prior. On the map, uh, Balsam Lake, Indian Point is directly above Scugog, as I mentioned, by approximately 45 to 50 miles, and by water accessible, as I mentioned, through the Scugog River, Sturgeon Lake, Camera Lake, and up to Balsam. Um, so, in 1844, the land is secured as a reserve. As early as 1846, if we put it in context, this is a really difficult time for the First Nations. Um, Alderville was created in 1835 by survey, um, Curve Lake, New England Company, probably 1829, around the same time for Hiawatha, New England Company, I believe. Alderville was created by way of the Methodist mission and the new credit or the credit mission, Methodist mission is uh, uh, well documented. Um, and so prior to the reserve lands being developed, um, there was a real push amongst our people um, to help them become farmers in the face of the changing society around them. Um, the early treaties show how they failed. Um, and so it was a difficult time and challenging time for all of the First Nations um, at, that, at that particular time in the face of a developing uh, colony. Um, for example, if we just go to the next slide, in 1788, the same year thereabouts of the Gunshot Treaty, uh, the population of the upper region of Quebec, what became Upper Canada, was approximately 17,000 people. By 1810, less than 70,000, and by 1840, approximately 132,359 people. So that in relation to this growth, the Mississauga could only conform, it would seem, in the best ways possible, including Methodism, to that around them. The Mississaugas of Scugog Island found themselves enveloped by settlement by holding on to their practices over, over the land, a difficult task as the wetlands were drained and fences built. So when the people were at Indian Point, they came back, they were documented by 1828, and Peter Jones is working amongst them, helping them to uh, receive the gospel and uh, convert to uh, Three minutes. <laughs> Whoa, what a tough crowd. Three minutes and we're taking a break. Um, so, Peter Jones is working amongst them by 1828. The dam at Lindsay is put in around 1834, raises the water. People get sick, it's drowned land. The drowned land around Lake Scuba. Uh, the people leave, they wander. Sort of like they wander, they go to cold water, which is a failed reserve project, if you will. And when they came back, and by the time they came back to secure the land of Scuba Island, all the land around the lake had been taken up. That's why Scuba Island is surveyed in the middle of the island and had no water access. And much like the Alderville case, Alderville was surveyed off the water. And it took our people upwards of 60 years to get that back on the water in Alderville. Um, so yeah, so so Scuba Island was surveyed originally off the water, one block, two blocks of land uh, comprising 800 acres, right in the middle of the island, and, and the 
people had lost because of the moving back and forth to cold water, to balsam, because of the move away, because of the drowned lands, when they came back, they had no access to water. Three minutes, is that three minutes up now? Pretty much. But he's got a hook here. <laughs> we'll take a three, three. Okay, we're going to take a break, and uh, thanks for supporting live entertainment. We'll be back right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sport here. Apparently, uh, one of the organizers was trying to get my attention before we started the presentation. Uh, we're going to take a 15-minute break for everyone to use the bathroom, grab a coffee,